Hi, welcome back. It's Deborah Peters. It's Friday, and this is the Deborah Peters Show. So delighted to get this rolling today. I've got a really good show for you all. And it's the beginning of March. It's March 1st. How cool is that? Here we are. We're exiting winter, you guys. We're getting ourselves to this place where we can begin to enjoy the spring. Hi, John and Elise, nice to see you. Wow, March 1st, springtime, although you probably wouldn't really know that being in LA and this constant like rain we're getting, but I was out the other day for a walk and uh, the birds were chirping and the sun was shining and the trees were budding, so <laughs> I think there's hope. Yeah, so today we're going to jump in and we're going to get into some things about your thoughts and your focus and what it is that you're creating. Hi, Klaus. And also how what you think and what you focus on actually causes an expansion of the universe. Um, well, you know, we can talk about this a lot. We can call it law of attraction. We can call it mindset, we can call it whatever you want. But today I really want to get into the energetic side of things because that's where I feel everything takes place in terms of expansion and contraction. Hi, uh, Celzo, nice to see you. And Asim, nice to see you. Oh my gosh, it's so great to have you guys get on here. Thank you very much. I would love to know about all of you. You know, it's like, I'm on here and I'm talking to you, but I don't know anything about your dreams. I don't know anything about your goals. Um, I'd love to know what it is that you're dealing with right now and whatever it is that you're, um, you know, that you feel maybe that's holding you back or, or that, you know, are, are you feeling, are any of you feeling a little stuck? Like what's going on out there? Cause you know, I'm working with clients every day, all day long, and everybody's just really going through these really big shifts right now. Hi, Mo and Tafen. Oh my gosh, good to see you again. Thank you for jumping back on here. And Anna A Athen Athanasis. That has to be a Greek name, right? Am I right? You got to tell me. Send me send me a heart or a thumbs up or something. Um, and Weldner, so good to see you. I'm going to have to call you by your last name, right? World is a changing. I know. You know what's really cool? So I'm going to just kind of give everybody a chance to like jump on here and I'm going to tell you a couple stories about some things I've had experiences with during this week. Jeremiah, nice to see you. And um, you're from Petra, Jordan. That's right. I had you on the other day. Nice to see you again. So this has been a very, very interesting week as we've come to the conclusion of February. And I have to say that, you know, I think every year this whole like short month, February being a short month, kind of usually catches me off guard. Like it's, we all know it's a short month. So logically I get it, but energetically it just kind of seems like it comes to this abrupt halt. And not that that's a bad thing, right? Not that that's a bad thing at all. I mean, sometimes for me, it's like, let's just get on with it. Let's just get moving forward. I'm a, I'm a July baby. So I'm a summer baby. And the winter time in some, some years have been kind of tough for me, honestly. Um, maybe it's the shorter days, maybe it's the lack of sun. When I lived in a cold climate, oh my God, it was just the inability to move about with ease. You know, you put on all these layers of clothes and you have to plug in your vehicle and you know, it's just, it's like winter has its own beauty too. So, you know, I'm not knocking winter. It's just that um, what I'm trying to say is that as the days get longer, I actually find I have more energy and I have more joy. It's crazy. On the weekend, I had some friends over to uh, 
to watch the Oscars. Hey, I'm a nomad too. I totally can relate to that, Tofan. Um, so I had some friends over to watch the Oscars on Sunday and I was rushing home from picking up some groceries, you know, from the market, from getting some provisioning done. And um, I was like, wow, it's really light in here. Why is it so light in here? And it's because the days are getting longer. So I have an appreciation for that. But um, yeah, it's been a very interesting week. Um, a lot of my clients were really in a place of um, shifting through some pretty significant thought patterns around possibilities, around success, around taking their business to the next level. I have a, a client that owns several insurance agencies and he's going through a really big shift right now. So if he jumps on here, I just wanted to reach out and say, hi and and tell him that you know i'm thinking of you and and i know that as you go through this process and we merge your companies together and, and we create this scaling process that your life is going to get easier um last saturday i had uh, i hosted a mastermind and had a group of of business leaders join me for a day we basically set up their um year in advance, you know, I always start with the end in mind and then I work it backwards. And that's a tool that I teach. So it's called reverse engineering. And for those of you that are creating goals, that are setting up your lives, that are looking to create more and achieve more, whether it's a large company you're running, whether it's a mom pop shop, whether, you know, you're an independent, you really want to learn to reverse engineer your goals. When you do that, they demystify, you know, because we can get caught up um, in thinking that, okay, if we don't know what the next steps are, then it's not going to happen, right? Or since we don't know how, then it's not going to happen. And that's actually couldn't be further from the truth because you don't, you should not know how. Let me just put it to you that way. If you know how something's going to happen, then you're really not growing and expanding. You're just regurgitating an old methodology. If you're really stretching and growing and expanding your mindset and creating and taking risks and creating and asking for more, then you should not know the how. The how is something that is going to have to reveal itself as you step along the path of moving toward the thing that you want to create. So um, let me just pause there for a moment and say hi to, um, to Gil and Luis. Thank you for jumping on here today. Um, and Morris, I did not miss you. I saw you in the trail there. Um, and Randall, how cool is that? So yeah, the world is so small, so we are all nomads wandering around. True that. Let me say this to that. So in 2004, I decided that I really needed to have a bigger playing field. So I dashed off to uh, the UK and started making some good connections, and I spoke at a couple of... Back in the day, it was uh, neuro-linguistic programming for me, so I spoke at a couple of NLP trainings. And, um, you know, I, there's something about travel, that when you travel, you, you change. And um, rolling into London and, 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 you know, being in the U.S., I had been in the U.S. for quite some time, and this was my world, you know, this was my universe. And this is what I thought was reality. And then, you know, you get on a plane and you go to another continent, right? Not just another country, but another continent. And it changes your entire perception of what's possible, especially when you hit up an ATM and you see the exchange rate and you're that, you're that exchange currency that's on the low end, right? So you're not, it's spitting out less than you're actually costing you. And that was like, uh, I don't know, it's like, okay, so we have America and then we have the rest of the world. 
And so what I want to just affirm to you is that started uh, – a global girl. So that's my hashtag, hashtag global girl. That, that started this whole global girl concept. And I was actually living a laptop lifestyle before hashtag laptop lifestyle. And it's become a norm for me. So, you know, this month I'll be traveling through multiple countries and setting up a new business venture in multiple cities. I've got partners on the ground in various cities and it's perfect for me, you know, just roll into town, get to know the local business people, bring something really magnificent that can contribute to everyone's greatness and then be that support system for assisting them in rolling out a new revenue stream. I mean, how does it get better than that, right? So lots of cool things happening. Um, in the mastermind, we got into a lot of uh, quantum physics and um, boundless thinking. And that is what I'd like to talk to you guys about today, is this idea of boundless thinking. So I wanna just pop this in to the chat. And um, I want to have that be something that you really seriously begin to entertain. Hi, Lynn King. Nice to have you. And Jose, good to see you. So the idea of boundless thinking. And you know what? Um, let me just say this before I get into that. I had a couple of phone calls this week with Jose. Thank you for spending some time with me on the phone. And yes, we will totally blow up your insurance business and you will be the broker of all brokers in Los Angeles, trust me. Um, just jump into that next mastermind so you can get these tools and definitely come to the boot camp in April. You really have to have the tools to run your mind because if you don't, then what ends up happening is that old thinking creeps back in. And it's human nature. You know, I've had three people this week that have said to me, okay, by coming to the boot camp, I know what I get. I get this. Then how do I stay the course after the fact? And isn't that always the point of, of, of change right there? You know, you can go through a program and you can download the tools, but then how do you not go back to that old thinking. Well, let me share this with you. So first of all, once you expand your neurology, you can never go back. I just popped up my website, you guys, so you can have a look at the programs that I'm running this spring. Once you expand your mindset, you can never go back. It may feel like you've gone back um, because you're entertaining some of those old thoughts but actually what's happening is you're repropagating your neurology with this new reality with the new thoughts with the new emotion with the new strategy you know once you begin to think bigger you can never think smaller and i would challenge you to look at every area of your life in this way so for example um, and this is just, you know, I'm going to just use this as a metaphor. So whether you like these things or not, it doesn't matter. It's, it's for the sake of making a point. Okay. So let's say you're, um, a scotch drinker. If there's anybody out there that enjoys a nice glass of scotch with a single ice cube and, you know, just kind of like that. I pre preference for me is, you know, a single malt scotch, just like to sip on it. So, so once you have, like you can be a scotch drinker, right? But then once you get into the older distilled scotch, it's like you can't drink the bar liquor anymore. Like you just can't even stand the thought of it. And that is how your neurology works completely. So once you know that basically champagne exists, 
then beer kind of takes a back seat. Once you know that you can and have and do experience high six figure income, the five figure income is a squeeze. Once you know that you can put together a higher level deal, the lower deals, I mean, you'll do them because it's revenue, but it's not as fun, right? Once you know what it feels like to be fit, then the feeling in your body of not having energy and not being flexible and not feeling like unstoppable just becomes unacceptable. Like you're just not willing to tolerate it. And this is what I'm talking about. Hi, Odile. Nice to see you. Um, so I think for me, once I started traveling to other countries and continents, it became more and more impossible to stay in one place. And literally, if, if I'm not doing a long haul flight somewhere every three, four months, I really start to get cabin fever. Like I really start to get itchy feet, you know, and getting out there and meeting new people and shaking hands and asking people how they're doing and, and what's going on in their lives and what are they creating and just continuing to, to engage with new cultures and new thinking. So the same thing is true for how you run your mind. And this is what I wanted to focus on today. So um, the universe or the multiverse, however you want to put it. Um, it. It's not that long ago that science actually agreed and acknowledged that the universe is constantly expanding. And I, I think that this is where the shift in your thinking will start, is that it, it can be tempting to think that we're the static cosmos, right? That, that there's, there's wherever you live, it's your town, or it's your state, or your province, or your country, or, you know, your neighboring countries, and that's all you consider to be your universe. But what if, yeah, what if it was the entire world? What if it was the entire universe? was your universe and it is actually because what causes the universe to expand is you your thoughts your ideas your dreams the things that inspire you that's what causes the universe to expand because there's um all right let me give it to you this way Let's say you have a can of food, right? And you have family to feed. Well, you can't get the food out of the can without something to open the can, right? And that's how your thoughts expand the universe. So, so the universe is like giving you all these opportunities and ideas through thought. It's like planting seeds in you, inspiring you. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Conspiring to blow up anything that you ask for. And all it needs is for you to be that vehicle for those ideas to flow through, to turn into tangible form. And so when you begin asking, our thoughts literally turn into tangible, measurable things. So when you begin asking, how do you get the energetic version of what you're asking for into a tangible, measurable, something you can hold in your hands, physical outcome? That's always the question because we all have asked 
And we've been asking and asking and asking all of our lives. You know, I was thinking this morning, um, just before I sat down to meditate, and by the way, I want you to start to get on this path of taking time every day to, to meditate every morning before you engage with the world. And you can go to my YouTube channel. Um, if you look on my website, you can find my YouTube channel through my website. There's a meditation there. And there's also an energy pull. So you want to start to draw energy to you. You want to start to draw that energy to you in different forms through events, people, conversations, um, ideas, whatever it is, and treat those things with um, reverence. So it's not just a harebrained idea, you know, it's not just um, this like pie in the sky. You can do gr the, the great things just as much as anybody else. Like, I think what happens in society is we have a tendency to look at the people that have done great things, you know, like, um, well, just pick anybody in history that's built some kind of an empire. And we look at that person and we put them on a pedestal and we think they're smarter than us. And we think they're, um, you know, they're ri richer than us. We think that we make up these stories in our head that they have, um, you know, a bigger network than us. They have more money than us. They, they, they're smarter than us. They, they, they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth. Everything was easy for them. Somebody gave it to them. You know, we make up all these stories and it's the biggest block <laughs> that we put in front of ourselves that keeps us from actually going for it just like they did. You know, at the end of the day, whatever someone that you consider to be great has achieved, you can also achieve an equal level of greatness in your own right. Not that you want to go and copy what they're doing, but that you can create it in your own right. And this is the thing that I'm talking about is you got to get into alignment with you because every thought you think literally expands the universe. The universe could not expand if you weren't a human being. Like that's how important you are. And this is something you really need to look in the mirror and say to yourself every day. Like I am so important that this universe could not keep expanding without me. And then that gives reverence to your gifts. That gives respect to your talents, to your time, to your energy, to your goals, to your objectives, to your dreams, to your ideas, to your thoughts. Give yourself the respect of being a thinker. Give yourself the respect of being someone that feels things and then pay attention to the clues, right? You know that saying success leaves clues? I often wondered what that meant. I thought that was the craziest comment I'd ever heard. But I think essentially what it's saying is pay attention. Like it doesn't have to be success that's already happened or it could be, you know, you could look at what someone else has created and you could study the way they thought about things. It wasn't, it isn't so much how they did it. It's how they thought about themselves. It's how they thought about their ideas. It's how they, they respected themselves so much that they went for it regardless, right? They just went for it regardless of the fear, regardless of the doubt, regardless of the people in their community that have tried to talk them out of it. I call it the crab theory. And um, I have a really good friend in Canada. Hi, Bjorn. Nice to see you. Um, thank you, Jose. I appreciate those kind words. And Robert Lord, nice to see you. Good to have you jump on here, you guys. I really appreciate it. So I have a friend in Canada and um, I think he might be watching. 
And I want to say this to you. You got to watch out for the crab theory. You got to watch out for the people that are used to you being a certain way that want you to stay that certain way because it supports them in them staying their certain way. Do you guys understand what I'm talking about? Yeah? Give me some love. I need to know that you're with me. Because we all have people around us that have known us for years. And when they think of us, you know, have you ever gone home for Christmas or, or New Year's or some kind of family gathering after you've been gone for a while and everybody still treats you like they did 20 years ago, you know, or they still treat you like they did when you were eight? Now you're like 38 and you've become this entirely other per different person because you've, you've grown, right? But they don't see that. So to my friend in Canada, to all the people that are surrounding you, that are telling you that this doesn't work or this won't work or that won't work or um, complaining to you and commiserating with you about how things are tough and how times are challenging, and how all the industrial space is empty and there's no business, you know, you're just gonna have to shut it off because that's the crab theory. You've started to crawl out of the tank and they don't want you to go because if you go, then you shine this big old light on how they're not growing. And I know you guys all know exactly what I'm talking about because you all have people in your circle of influence that when you start to grow and expand, start to point out to you all the reasons that it's not a good idea and that you won't succeed and that you'll fall on your face and that you'll lose everything and that it'll be hard for you. And all of they go on and on and on and on. But the truth of the matter is, if you stay the course, if you keep thinking the thoughts with greater reverence and greater respect for what it is that you are creating for your gifts, for your talents, for your dreams, for your thoughts, for your desires, for your possibilities. And you keep asking it to come in and you keep inviting it in and you use that energy pull and you meditate every day. You will eventually build up enough bandwidth on that new paradigm within you that it's like your whole life will just like blow open and everything you've ever asked for will just come screaming toward you with excitement and joy and enthusiasm. And it's really that simple. And if you think it's not, then you're talking to the wrong people and you're reading the wrong news and you're listening to the wrong stuff online and you're hanging out with the wrong circle of influence because we become our environment. And whoever we spend the most time with is what our lives end up looking like. And I have come to realize that that is the number one reason why most people are afraid to help and engage a homeless person. Most people think it is going to rub off on them and they cut a wide swath around that person. You got to get strong in yourself so that no matter where you go on this planet and no matter who you meet, that you are so grounded and centered and aligned with your gifts and your talent and your greatness that there's nothing anyone could ever say to you or do to you or think or prove to you they couldn't bring you any amount of statistics and be that realist because you would know different you would know that your thoughts are what caused this universe to expand and you are an such an integral part of the expansion of this universe that it cannot expand without you. And that's what you need to get deep down in here. That needs to be something that you know for sure. It's not trust. It's not faith. It's not hope. 
It's not belief. It's a knowingness. It's a knowingness. And no one can ever take that away from you. Because once you know, you've expanded and you can never go back. On Saturday in the Mastermind, one of the people said, you know, realist, pessimist, realist, pessimist, like, is there a difference? And my answer was no. Because you know what a realist is? Are you a realist? Are you being realistic about your life? Because you know, I'll tell you what a realist is. With all due respect, you guys, a realist is a coward. A realist is someone that continues to focus on what is and doesn't have the desire to turn their focus to what is coming. So they're playing it safe because they don't have the tenacity to grow into what it is they're asking for. And if you don't have the tenacity to grow into what you're asking for, then you're always going to look at what is, and that's going to be your reality. And yeah, things will change, but they'll keep changing into the same version of what they are. So whether that's struggle and pain and suffering or abundance and love and prosperity and grace. So that's my show. <laughs> that's my show. That's, that's my message. I, um, I hope this has helped you. I could definitely go on and on and on because I'm on a roll now. I'm on my soapbox, but you get it. You guys get it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, it's just about making a decision. How bad do you want it? I was talking to a client yesterday. He's divorcing his wife. Um, he's lost his businesses. He's living in LA and is, wishes he was back in whatever state he moved out of. and. He's kind of depressed, you know, and um, the whole entire coaching session, he kept wanting to beat down his wife and make her the problem and beat down the economy. And at the end of the day, I'm just like, when are you going to get sick of listening to yourself talk like this? Like, how bad do you need to drill your life down? to pain and suffering and loss before you're finally willing to turn your focus the other way and to start appreciating who you are and appreciating this planet and appreciating this life and all of the blessings. Because when you get into that space, then as the clues come, you just it just lands in your lap. You'll act on it with enthusiasm and happiness and joy and expectation and possibility thinking. So love you guys. Have an incredible weekend and I will see you on here next week on Tuesday at 1230. Jump on to my website, take a look at the masterminds I have on March 23rd and March 30th. And the boot camp I have on April 25th and 26th. And those are in Los Angeles. Now, if you're international, I can, I can easily live stream you in. So don't worry about it. And then in May, I'm in Canada teaching a boot camp at a college. And so that's on my website too. So love you. Have a blessed weekend. Ciao, ciao. Bye.